Another Tuesday has gone by, which means another episode of Vanderpump Rules Season 11 has also went by. Tonight, today, whatever time it is, wherever you are, we are going to be roasting and recapping Vanderpump Rules Season 11, Episode 10. Something about in the sand, but really it's just a bunch of hypocritical haters. So smash that like, grab your beverage. This could be a long one, kids. And let's get started. If you like what you see, come and get it with me. I know you deserve all you want. Cause your heart's made of gold. But don't wait till you're old. If you want it, I get you some. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel, stand-up comedian and Bravo television and pop culture vulture, uh, Jolene Lunzer here to roast and recap Vanderpump Rules, all of the episodes. Today we're going to be talking about season 11 of Vanderpump Rules, episode 10. All right, we got to do it. <sighs> and we're going to be roasting it and recapping it. If this is your first time on my channel, um, what I do is I take a comedic look at all things Bravo television and today uh, all things Vanderpump. Sometimes we struggle to find the comedy, but we usually we usually get there. Um, also, I am very opinionated. Uh, so I am biased of, you know, who I like for my own reasons, but you're welcome to like who you like in the comment section. And we don't have to agree. We can agree to disagree and not be a-holes to each other. So um, smash that like if you haven't already. Let's set a like goal for 800 and see if we can get it. You guys killed it with the like goal for last week's episode. So I have no doubt that we'll be able to hit it. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Uh, we're on our way to 40K and we're getting closer and closer. Okay, we're closer to 37K, but 40,000 is right around the corner and then 50,000 and then the world. Okay, maybe not the world. I don't know. I don't know, you guys. Um, if you want to support the channel further than liking or subscribing, you can always send a super chat while we're live. I'll highlight your comment. You can send a super thanks after the video posts. Uh, you can also hit me up on the Venmo Cash App PayPal. All the information is below and then in the description as well as my YouTube membership, Patreon, if you feel so inclined, but you don't have to. Uh, shout out, I would like to shout out Kathy. Kathy, thank you so much. Kathy sent me um, two things off of my Amazon wish list. Uh, that's also in the description of this video if you're interested in checking it out. And she said, enjoy your content and your personality. That is so sweet of you, Kathy. Organization for your new home and they are two organizational things and I love organizational stuff. And one is for under the sink and everybody needs organization under the sink. And uh, another is to organize my Ziploc bags. I know, I know, I know my 40 is showing, but I, I love it. I don't like opening up a drawer and it's just like a mess. I'm not saying I don't have some of those drawers, but I just, I love organization. So thank you, Kathy. That was so sweet of you. And it was also sweet to get um, a, a nice message as well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shout out to everyone uh, joining me live. Bunny. Thank you. Bunny says, love your content. I'm also from Minnesota and moved to LA. Bunny, what part of Minnesota are you from? I love to um, hear from my fellow Minnesotans. So thank you. And you live in LA. So I mean, <laughs> Same Z's from Minnesota to California. Nicole, go to Amazon. I found a whole bunch of them and uh, so great. So, so great. I cannot wait. Yes, the container store is like, I, I never knew that I would love a container store. And then I entered my 40s and I was like, oh, take me home tonight. I don't want to let you. Okay. So, yes. And happy spring, everybody. Susie SP Squirrel says happy spring. It's been trying to snow here in Wisconsin. Oh, poor Scotty. Poor Scotty. No, you guys deserve to now have, I mean, it hasn't been too bad. Well, I say that from California, so who knows? And hello to my Canadians. Lisa's in the house saying this will be my first complete live with Jolene. Thank you, Lisa. Coming uh, to you from Toronto. Oh, Toronto. Big love and huge fan. Love your roast recaps, impersonations. Uh, love you. You guys are just sweeties. Wipe the CDs. Thank you so much. And please, as we go through this episode, I want to hear all of your opinions. I want to know everything you think because this is, we're in episode 10. We're on our way through this season. It's it's really, it's been très difficile, as the French would say. Not the season we thought it would be. Um, instead, we've had, it's it's been pushed down, uh, pushed at us. It's it, We've been basically assaulted with some forgive Tom, even though he doesn't give a shit. And no one can hold him accountable, and he's the victim. And we're like, huh? How did the guy who caused all this become the victim? I would. Okay. And now we're seeing uh, these thirsty, 
thirsty um, Vanderpump Rules cast. We are seeing how reality TV really works. There's no friends in reality TV, allegedly, because if you look at, I'm like, Lala, what are you doing? You guys know me. You know I want to cheer for the women. I want to cheer for the women so badly. And Lala, you are making it utterly impossible with whatever it is you're doing here. I don't like it. Okay. So there's going to be a lot of that. Um, thank you, Evelyn, for the first super chat of the live. Evelyn says you are the best, Jelly. And Evelyn, you're the best. And you are just so sweet. Always, always and forever. And I appreciate you. <sighs> you guys. Okay. So let's get right into this episode. Um, I have some little, we're going to cover some things on uh, Twitter um, as well. And um, because pump rules was trending today. And I think it's because a lot of people, I mean, there are people who, I think there's a lot of people who are angry and some people are angry at Ariana. I don't understand that, but if you are one of those people, feel free to put it in the chat and maybe, you know, you can explain it, but I, I don't get it. I've seen all the hot takes of like, Ariana shouldn't have left anything in her room. Let's just talk about that. We're going to kind of go around the episode today because it's, it's a lot. All right. So, um, one of the arguments of Maya, their beautiful dog, um, getting into Ariana's room where Tom Sandoval locked a dog in a room for hours, a room that wasn't dog proof in a room that Ariana never intended for the dog to be unsupervised for hours. You know me, I have two rescue dogs. I, at all times, I'm like, where are my dogs? Okay. I know Teddy just went in that bedroom sometimes when I'm live, but I try my best to dog proof things and I'm never just shutting them in a room that is not dog proof for hours. I, I just, I don't understand that mentality, but I've heard and seen so many takes going, Ariana, why does she have food? Even Lala on the after show, which far more, we get far more of the after show than we do some of these episodes. So Lala's take on the after show was, um, didn't she have like a garbage bag promotion? Wasn't she like, didn't she do ads for glad? garbage bags or hefty, hefty cinch sack. Shouldn't she know how to throw away her garbage? I'm just like, I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry. And people are like, why does, why does Ariana have takeout containers next to her bed, including skewers, chicken skewers, uh, like the sticks, the actual skewers. I don't know. Maybe because their, um, homeowner suite has now become her, uh, her, <laughs> apartment. It's literally, uh, become her no bedroom apartment. I guess it would just be a one bedroom or it would be one of those apartments that, why is that? I've been out of an apartment now. I'm so bougie, even though this is the first house I've ever owned. Um, it is, has become, uh, one of those apartments like an efficiency apartment that that's what it's become. And, uh, because she had some takeout boxes and skewers, people are like, Oh my God, it's disgusting, gross clean up after yourself and not taking into account the fact that she never, and she's living there because Tom Sandoval had sex with her friend for seven months and carried on a torrid, mean, cruel affair and banged Rachel Raquel when her grandma was dead and banged Rachel Raquel when their other dog was dead. But let's forget all of that. And then dressed up as his mistress for Halloween, right in front of Ariana, all the while he was banging her. And Rachel Raquel was one of Ariana's very good friends on the show, one which she stuck up for. She stuck up for Rachel Raquel a lot. So everyone's just like, oh, we're so over that. We're so over that. So instead, we're going to just throw all that to the wind and we're going to say, thank you, Veronique Studio. And it's like basically she's living in a very big studio apartment. And don't pretend you dirty little bitches out there who are judging Ariana. Don't you pretend you have never had a snack next to your bed. Okay. Cause I have had a snack. All right. I just had some yogurt the other day and hype man, husband, shell, he don't like it when I eat in bed, but guess what? I do sometimes. And I'm a grown ass lady and you can't stop me from a snack. All right. And I put the little yogurt container as I was watching my shows on my nightstand. And then producer Tilly, who's not here right now, she came over and she licked it and she loved it because cats love yogurt. All right. And we both were better for it. Our gut health was better in the probiotic. So don't you dare pretend you ain't never had like Tracy saying a bad burrito. I see all these dog owners going, I would never, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. or people come on. 
give me a break. Natasha says, I eat in bed. So that offend it offended me too. It should offend all of us who eat in bed. And like Bravo and Blaze, shout out to Bravo and Blaze. They're amazing. Um, wrote, don't forget, Tom Sandoval dressed up as his mistress for Halloween during the affair. Just remind yourself of the bigger picture. The bigger picture is Tom was home with the dog. And if he says Maya is his dog or, you know, um, maybe he should know better than to close the dog into a bedroom where it is trapped for hours on end. That's the problem. There are spaces in people's homes that dogs shouldn't go to. And Tom Sandoval says, well, it's just a, uh, the problem is that the dog wasn't trained off. Uh. It just wasn't trained properly. Well, Tom, you've been there for how many years has Maya been alive? You could have been a part of that training. I don't understand. I don't understand how that could, how the training could fall on Ariana as well. I mean, we know you were busy putting your in things where it didn't belong in Ariana's friends and God knows who else and all those Vegas trips. Um, so you just didn't have time to probably walk the dog, pay attention to the dog, similar to Rachel Raquel, who didn't seem to have time for Graham, for the dog formerly known as Graham, who's now hippie. Um, and you wonder why these dogs might uh, react. You know, that should be a big priority for you, but you were too busy sneaking around doing your uh -uh in um, other ladies while Ariana was grieving. I mean, let's be honest, Tom, in this episode, you really think we're going to believe you're a good pet owner when we saw Ariana grieving Charlotte so much last season, coming home from a trip, being just an emotional wreck like most of us would who love our pets and our fur babies. And then you are just like, hey, I can't wait to... Rachel Raquel again. That's it. That's all. That's you didn't care. Literally, Ariana's home grieving Charlotte. And you're like, oh, can we bang in the Jedi? Let's bang in the Jedi. So no, no, no. You can't come into season 11 and pretend you are some good daddy. You're a good fur daddy because my husband would never. Okay. Mm -mm, mm -mm. If I'm grieving, he's grieving. We're all grieving. The whole house is grieving. If I'm sad, we're all sad. Okay. And that is your first mistake. You should not have time to be mm -mm, um, another lady. So this whole episode where they're like, well, maybe it is Tom. No, nothing's Tom's. Okay. Cause Tom's a liar and Tom doesn't know how to treat things. He doesn't know how to treat people. So he sure as hell don't know how to treat dogs. Ariana is not at fault for the fact that Tom locked the dog in the bedroom. He's like, I got to do work on the house. Duh. then it's your job to make sure hmm, I wonder where my pets are how are you in a home and and like your pets are they, they could have ran away he could have been hit by a car there's lots of things that could happen to sweet little uh, baby girl Maya I mean you are an attempted dog murderer okay in my opinion you really are you really are it's gross it's gross Tom Tom it's gross maybe you should if you want to be a fur daddy maybe you should spend more time with your kids because really, uh, I, I see this when like people with human children, um, men with human children cheat. And I'm like, how do they have time? And they got all these human children, but they got all the time to go eh, eh, in another vagina than their wives or their baby's mothers. And I'm like, well, then clearly you're not taking care of the kids. You know, you never made some time for those fur babies, Tom. You're, you're, you're a bad person. It's bad. It's really bad. And I hate the fact, Lala... I need to talk to you. We got to talk. We got to talk, Lala. You and the, the guy without the neck, Randall. Okay. Um, uh, uh, where do you get off? Where do you get off now using Scandable as a way to like make money? And I was like, get it. Send it to Daryl. Do the damn thing. Make the money. Buy the home. I was so proud of you. But now flip the script and go, mm, don't bite the hand that feeds you. It's not Sandoval that's feeding you. It's Ariana that's feeding you. Let's be honest here. How much money you think you're going to make partnering up with Sandoval? Where's his deals? Are you going to do some Uber Eats songs with him? Are you going to go with his karaoke band? Let's see. Duracell? No. Hmm. Is there going to be mer pro Sandoval merch? Mm -mm. No. Huh? It seems like you only made money when you were being a girl's girl and supporting your girl, Ariana. It seems like that's when the money came home, honey. All right. And if you're looking, you know, for in the future, let's just say Lala's like, I need to cement my place on the show. Ariana's probably gone. And Lala's like, I need to cement this place. I need to uh, figure this out. You know, Ariana's probably not going to be here. Um, wait till after that happens. And then if I guess if you have to go do whatever you need to do, but Literally, this is months after she found out all this stuff with Rachel Raquel 
and Tom Sandoval. Okay. It's months. And when we say things on the show, like, oh, she has to work it out. This is horrible for you. Have you worked it out with Rand? Are you guys on speaking terms? Do you have good conversations or do you have an in-between? Because I could have sworn you told me you have an app that you guys talk through. So they have that app, luckily, for people who have children and have to, you know, communicate. And thankfully, they have that. So you don't have to communicate directly with him. But unfortunately, they don't have that for us who don't have children and go through breakups, but yet have these big business deals like homes and things we own. And some people might say, well, maybe they should have got married. Well, they didn't. And not everyone gets married. OK, and it's not so easy to leave. Lala, you could leave because you didn't own Randall's house. I don't even know if Randall owns Randall's house. Pickleball probably owns Randall's house. Who knows whose money he allegedly stole or was going to invest and then bought all that shit that you had for so long and that you lived in. So you had to leave. He literally could call the sheriff like, Sheriff, hello, 911 -er. Can you get her out of here? And you would have to go. Ariana's situation, very different. Very different. This man is deciding that he wants to keep the home and then not pay her what it's worth. And Ariana's like, no, I want the home to sell. Because first of all, Tom can't afford the house. He can't afford it, guys. And we all know that. We we know that, right? Okay. Uh, we know that Tom can't afford the house. He owes his mom allegedly $250,000 for his crappy bar. And uh, he can't pay the bills with a karaoke band. He was thinking about getting a roommate. So I'm why should Ariana miss out on more money and more things because of him? Why should she just go, you, you can keep the house? So I was very happy when I saw Lucinda, who did you guys love Lucinda? I loved her. Oh my gosh, the decorator, she came to do inventory because Ariana says, we're doing inventory, all right? What did I pay for here? Because again, people are, I see people online believing Tom Sandoval's narrative about this home and what Ariana pays. He's a known liar. He also got caught in another lie, two lies, if not more, in this episode. One was the litter box, and then they show receipts. There's Ariana cleaning the litter box. Should they both clean the litter box more often? Yeah, that was gross. You should definitely do that, okay? Take care of little kitty. She's sweet. And the second lie was that he didn't know about Sheena and Tom Schwartz because cut to another scene where Tom Schwartz is saying, yeah, Tom Sandoval knew. So he's a liar. So what he says are lies. He's proven himself to be a liar. I don't want that for him. He did that to himself. Sir, you're a liar. Liars lie. And until you start telling the truth or correcting that and admitting that you're a liar and you need help, I can believe nothing you say. So Ariana has Lucinda and even Lucinda co-signed this. Um, yeah, DC, you would think they would have some kind of... Um, Here's what we need. We need the the litter robot people. If you can hit up Ariana and do some kind of sponsorship or something, because there's I've seen some pretty big celebrities doing the robot litter. I'd like a robot litter thing. I need to get on that. But for sure, hit up Ariana and then, you know, that'll help a little bit. But even Lucinda, who is their interior designer. Uh, when they were doing, you know, inventory on everything and who bought what. And it seemed that she was like, yeah, you bought most of this, Ariana. And she also co-signed the fact that Tom Sandoval is, uh, he's the one who is uh, overreactive. He's the one who is uh, ridiculous. He's the one who is um, always mad and raging and yelling at women. So when he talks about this rage that Ariana has, I'm like, <laughs> okay, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you act like we just met you. We've watched you for now 11 seasons. We're in the 11th season. We've watched how you enjoy yelling at women. You get mad when you can't yell at women. You're like, oh, God, if I was a gay man, I could yell at women more. If I was a woman, I could yell at more. But since I'm a cis male, I just can't yell at women. We've seen you yell at Stassi. We've seen you yell at Katie. We've seen you yell at Lisa Vanderpump. We've seen you yell at Ariana. We've seen you yell at Lala. We've seen you yell at Kristen. We've seen, I don't think there's a woman in LA you haven't yelled at besides me. And maybe you did and I ignored you because that's prob that probably would happen. The new thing is that, you know, as a cis male, um, did you say cis? Is your voice yelled to whatever you feel entitled to do. But as a cis as a straight male, if I was a woman, I could do that. If I was a gay male, I could do that. But as a straight male, if I raise my voice, it's wrong. Yep, it's wrong, Tom. You need to be, you can't control your wiener and your emotions. You are, a, you're a baby man. And I hate to insult babies like this, but you literally have no emotional control and you have no dick control. And those are bad qualities in grown-up men, all right? 
So the episode, I know we kind of were all around. Uh, and yes, Butterfly Tom is so jealous of Ariana. So is Lala and Brock. Oh, Brock, you're getting it. You're we're, you're getting it, Brock. I have been holding back on you, Brock, because I wanted to believe in you. But you're you're getting it, New Zealand. I thought he was from Australia this whole damn time. How the fridge did he just become from New Zealand? I heard today in or last night's episode, Sheena was like, "Oh, you didn't have um, what was it, Play-Doh in New Zealand?" I'm like, "What the fuck? Huh? He was in the ring? Like what? He what does he know?" The Fly of the Concords? Does he know Brit? Huh? Does he know Jermaine? I, I thought he was Australian. May I don't know. But maybe Sheena forgot where he lives or where he's from too. But uh, wonderful, both wonderful places to be. But I was like, damn, I thought this dude was Australian, you know. And I was going to let it go, Brock, but not today. Not today. We're going to we're gonna have to have a talk, Brock. We're going to have to have a talk. And I've met you. And you are very kind and very nice. But I'm sorry. We have to have a talk. Um, Yes. So uh, Anne shows up. And she has like her woman daily work outfit. I love it. And she's like, hi, um, I'm here to interview with you, Ariana, because you're looking for an assistant. <laughs> Let me go check upstairs with Tom real quick. So she runs upstairs and Tom's like, ugh, ugh, ugh. this gym with the LED lighting, sir, read a book. This isn't helping you. Your muscles can get as big as <laughs> the freaking house you think you can afford that you can't. But that's still not going to help you control your dick or your mouth. All right. So it's not helping. It's not helping, sir, because what are you going to use the muscles for? You only fight women. And if you start doing that with the, the physicalities, uh, that's a felony. That's a felony, sir. So Anne's like, let me go check on Tom. Mm, hi, Tom. Hi, ah, you okay? And he's like, Ugh, yeah, I'm okay. Oh. Oh, and he's got like a stupid journal and he's just like staring at himself in the mirror. Oh, my gross. And Anne's like, all right, well, I'm having Ariana because she's like, um, I'm in a circle, um, you know, like the circle of life, uh -huh, Lion King. No, I'm helping Ariana um, with my assistant friends because I think I might know someone. Okay, bye. Stay in here. Don't leave. Turn on your noise machine. Super loud. Hit it. Hit it. And then he's like, oh, something's going on. So then she goes downstairs and she interviews with Ariana. <laughs> And it was so cute. And she's like, I just, I want to work for a boss lady. I was like, oh. Sweet Anne, sweet, sweet Anne, and you deserve to work for a boss ass bitch, not a big baby bitch like Tom Sandy, but you deserve it, baby girl. You deserve to be empowered and not as we learn, like Danielle is telling us on the screen, she had to pick up his underwears. I'm sorry, what? You are on a reality show. What? I, I, first of all, you should, as a grown man, again, you should be able to pick up your own underroots, your own huggies, your own pull-ups, um, but clearly you can't. And then Ariana says, oh, let me add insult to injury. He also doesn't change them very often, but yet he was wondering why I didn't want to bone him. And I'm like, it doesn't surprise me because remember, everyone says he stinks. You know, I didn't start these rumors. I didn't start the fire. It was always burning since the world's been turning. I didn't do it. Okay. People said that. People said that he stinks. You got dirty balls. Your balls is dirty. You got to wash your balls. You got to change your underpants. You got to get a new pair of Hanes his way, Tom. There isn't an enough. Oh, no, there's not enough tide in the world that can clean those. Th mm -mm. And I bet you he never learned to wipe properly. Now, remember, everything I say is alleged and everything, however, is true, except for the parts that are false. OK, and entertainment purposes only, obviously. But yeah, wash your drawers, wash your mouth, wash your ween. This 2024, lots of little diseases, lots of little critters can get up in there. You got to be careful. You can't just be sticking it everywhere, you know, leave the things in the pool alone. I, I, he gives me vibes like he'd be that type of guy that will get his dick stuck in one of the pool drains. Do you know what I'm saying? You guys know, you guys know what I'm saying, right? Or he'd be like, oh, I just wanted to try it. Ah, it hurts. Ah. And I would be like, let him rot. Figure it out. Good luck. Bye. Ugh, disgusting. Totally, totally disgusting. So Tom is listening from the staircase. Like, and Ariana's like, okay, well, Anne, um, I don't know if right now is a good time because he's, I don't know if you noticed, but he's kind of vindictive and cuckoo. Uh, so we'll be in touch. And Anne's like, okay, 
Okay, yeah, because his underwear are so dirty. And I've had pink eye like five times since I started working for him. And now I know why. And I have to pick up after his sloppy Joe parties. Ugh. And, and then every time I make a comment about her, it's allegedly bullying, even though she's not that cool. She's not nice. And she talks mad shit. Okay. Oh, uh, yes. Witness says Tom probably farts a lot too. <laughs> He's the type that likes, he believes his own hype and he loves his own stench. Oh my God. He's like, Ugh, and he's like, mm. you know it. You know, he just loves the smell of his own toots, 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 toots. You guys, you know it. Thank you, Pamela, for the super chat. Pamela says Tom will never get it because he's a narcissist. Yeah. I know that, you know, we all know that that term is thrown around. Uh, a lot these days, but now I'm thinking maybe there's just a lot of them out there. Maybe they're just everywhere. Covert, revert, overt, all the verts, you know, maybe it's not that it's thrown out a lot. Maybe there's just a lot of these efforts all over the place. So thank you, Pamela. Jamie B says, can we pop the cysts? Finally, I would love to, I would just love to say, bye, 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 bye. Want to be a fool for you, you know, wash your drawers and, you know, walk away for two million years. Uh, I would love that, Jamie B. Thank you for the super chat. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. I am not sure. Oh, okay. It's gag. It's gag alicious. All right. So then um, we're getting ready for it's, it's, it's hard to say because it's so boring. Um, James and Allie. Allie have, you know, their home by the airport that's so cute. And they're going to have a party. Lala's having a water tasting party. Cancel the show. Cancel, cancel the show. And I love water. But how much? What? Uh, she's going to be a water Somali. Huh? No. Mm -mm, no. Stop it. Lala, stop it. Stop it. Without Ariana, what is this show? What are you going to do? What are you going to do if they, if Katie and Ariana are finally like, screw this shit. You guys are treating us like crap. What are we going to do? Have water parties? Waterboarding? I feel like I was waterboarded during that water tasting. And that poor gentleman that showed up that loves water. Okay, awesome. Great. Water's great for you. Uh, and Lala's like, I've been sober almost five years, which I am very proud of her for. I just celebrated 12 years of sobriety. So uh, shout out to five. That is a huge deal um, in all sincerity. Uh, and this gentleman was like, there's lots of different waters. There's this water, that water. We got we got shrimp water. We got steak water. We got all the waters. And then I'm like, and Lala is inviting Tam. 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 The Toms. Now, Katie and uh, Ariana are like, oh, this is going to be great. Ariana goes over to Katie's and they're talking and Lala texts and says, oh, if you want liquor for your water, which they all do, um, BYOB, we're going to have water. I love sparkling water as if Lala couldn't get any less relatable. Okay. I, I, yeah. So, okay. I, I don't know. Do you want an award for that? I. Poor James and Allie. I mean, their house has now the, it's like the little kids are hosting the elderly because no one else <laughs> really has it together, uh, as far as like home ownership and things on the show right now. Cause we have divorces and breakups and cheating and all of that. Um, and then the guy's like, this is the last bottle of water of this kind you'll ever see. And Lala was like, oh, we got the water. Did we get, we got the, oh my God, for us. And it reminded me of PJ's, PJ's for PJ's Lala and Gucci slide Lala, where she was just like really believe in her own hype. And I, you know, I struggle with resenting Lala because she made us watch seasons um, of that no neck man, Randall of big Ed's brother of that yucky guy with the smoker voice. We had to watch him for seasons because of her. She's like, nobody better mess with my man. Uh, uh. And we're like, that's not a man. Okay. Okay, cool. And we had to have pickleball tournaments and she dressed up like, are we forgetting? Are we forgetting what Lala has put us through through the years to only do this to us? She has no respect for fans. Then she makes little comments like, Ugh, Ariana like didn't tell us that she got Broadway. I had to find out on social media, like some person from Iowa. What's wrong with Iowa, Lala? Lauren from Utah. You're from Utah. What is, what is she doing? What is she doing? Who cares? Who cares? Middle America pays your bills, baby. Baby. 
oh, I'm just, I'm so tired of this like jealous Lala who's like, oh, I've never seen anyone get cheated on and become God. Ugh. Well, we weren't invested in your relationship because we knew you didn't love them. We knew it was just a transactional relationship for money. And you had a beautiful baby girl. Congratulations. But it was BJ's for PJ's. You guys would break up and you would take your sandals. I, I'm sorry. I'm not invested in that. I'm not. We were invested in Tom and Ariana. They had been dating the majority of the time on the show. Other relationships we were more invested in. We're not going to be invested in some old man that you first wouldn't show us that allegedly you were cheating with and that after the first night you banged, you got a Range Rover. That doesn't seem like love, I guess. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe it is. Maybe that's what Shakespeare's been talking about all these years. I don't know. And then when it doesn't work out, what did you expect us to do? We were like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that makes sense. We knew it wouldn't work out because those kind of relationships don't work out. Okay. <sighs> it's just. <sighs> so the water party where we're waterboarded. We go to the water party and Schwartz shows up and he's nipping out. Did you guys notice nipping out in his green sweater, the whole show? I'm like, oh my God, Schwartz, put a bra on. Like, what is wrong with you? Like nipple city. Oh my gosh. She was free in the nip. Katie was there. This is fresh off uh, having sex with Max. And there was lots of conversation of, you know, is this, you know, Katie is a hypocrite. No, she's not. Uh, do I think Max deserves Katie's vagine? No, but it's Katie's right to give any douche canoe she wants the sex. Okay. Because the Toms didn't seem to have a problem, you know, sharing their wieners and their tongues and things uh, when they were in relationships with Katie and Ariana. So Katie had asked him last season, Hey, just don't hook up with Rachel Raquel. Don't hook up with anyone in the friend group. And he couldn't even do that. And even when he tries to explain it in the diary room, he's just like, in his interviews, he's like, well, I mean, we had an agreement. Granted, I didn't uh, <laughs> keep up the agreement. So yeah, she can stick it to Max. Max can stick it to her. They can stick it to each other. Do I like him? No, I don't. But guess what? You know who you should be mad at? Max. Again, the misogyny on this show. What about Max? He's your best friend. And when did he become your best friend? I thought, Tom. what's Tom Sandoval? I mean, I wouldn't have Tom Sandoval as a best friend, but man, you rode hard for that guy to only, what do you got? Sheena friendships now? Tom Schwartz, you got a bunch of best friends at 50 years old? I didn't know Max was your best friend, but Mazel, congratulations. But why are we still blaming the women? Katie owes you nothing. You're vapor. She owes you nothing. You couldn't, you couldn't keep, you wanted to embarrass her. You cheated on her nonstop. You admitted to it. So why can't she have sex with your friend? You know who shouldn't? You know who should have kept their genitals in their pants, in their skinny jeans? Max, because he's your friend. He's your best friend. Katie doesn't even want to hang out with you. She can, bang, she can bang your dad if she wants to. That's what happens when you disrespect people. Now they don't owe you shit. If she wants to bang your dad, your mom, she can do that. I didn't make the rules. You should have been more respectful to her when you were with her. You should have controlled yourself. You said you drank too much and smoked too many blunts. That's not our problem. I mean, what, what do you think? And they were so, Tom Sandoval was so excited to see Katie had banged Max. He's like, oh, she's a hypocrite. Duh. Yeah. Uh, no, she's not. No, she's not. Nope, Tom. You can't get out of this. You can't shove the blame on another woman like you love to do. Mm, it's just you. It's just you, Tom. Yeah. So go confront Max and be like, hey, hi, that's my ex-wife. That's not cool. You're supposed to be my best friend because I can guarantee you my best friend isn't going to have sex with my ex-husband. <laughs> like that's if we're still best friends. That's totally weird. Even James's mom in this episode was like, I'm team Katie getting it on with Max. Me too, James's mom. I don't even know your name, but me too. And she's right. Why not? So James goes to lunch with like Lisa Vanderpump and um, Ali and his mom shows up two years later and he brings some flowers and they start spilling. And that's when his mom was like, oh, yeah, no, I I'm all for Katie getting it in. OK, because these women owe these men zero respect. Tom Sandoval couldn't even respect Katie's mom. Tom Sandoval couldn't even respect his own girlfriend. Tom Sandoval couldn't even respect his own genitals. Like, he's a mess. Doesn't respect his dogs, his fur babies, nothing. 
Send the devil's a liar. He's not a victim. He's not a victim. You're not going to get me with this victim shit. And you're not going to get me to hate Ariana. Because we got to even the field because he got bad feelings. And we got to save the men of the show. Nope. The men have to save themselves. I do not have time for this. We as smart people watching this show. We don't have time for this. This is some bullshit. All right. Back to this water tasting fiasco. So after they taste the water and they're all so bored, Tom makes a joke during water tasting Sandoval when they're like, has anyone done this before? Of course, no one's done this before. Who would want to? This is ridiculous. This is what? No, no. Plus Waterloo. We all know that's the best bubble water. Hello. Perrier can suck it. It's not even that great. It's not. It's okay. It's okay. Topo Chico is better than Perrier. Perrier. It's basic. Ugh, no, no Sankey. Okay. So Tom's like, oh, I did yesterday. And Ariana's like, everyone, because you're not funny. Is this like, okay, Tom. And I was like, oh, you did? I was just, I was just kidding. I was just kidding. If you have to say you're kidding afterwards, the joke didn't work. It's not a good joke. Okay. Yes, I saw that Terry was on Ryan's. I haven't watched it yet, but I'm excited, Blue Bevy, because I love Terry. Shout out to Terry. Okay. So they're there and they're at the water thing. They have to order pizzas uh, because they're just so bored. And James said he had to foot the bill for the pizzas. La Lala, when are you going to pay these bills, girl? <laughs> he is not your Rand. If you are throwing a party at someone's house, come on, Angie Kate. You got to, you got to pay. You, you got to pay for the food and stuff that irresponsible. Lala. Okay. So the conversation starts, the ladies are talking and they're talking about the, um, Anne situation and Lala, do you see how eager she was an eager beaver to learn about this? And she's like, tell me about the Anne situation. And then here comes Sandoval in his dirty ass tank top with his crusty drawers walking past like, I just gotta get the pizza. And Ariana's like, Oh, see, that's why I don't want him around. Cause I can't even tell a freaking story. And then she's like, well, Anne. I think Tom fired Anne because she was crying and she came up to me and thought she was going to be without a job. And so I was just like trying to comfort her because he, of course, was, you know, listening to what we were doing, what we were saying. And um, yeah. And then Tom's like, oh, you guys don't have ranch? Let me go get be Captain Save a Ranch Ho. So then Ariana's like, when did he ever come on? He's doing too much. She's clearly annoyed. She told you people she's not ready. She's like, forgive, sounds good, forget, I'm not sure I could. They say, time heals everything, but I'm still waiting. She's the chicks. She's that chick song. She's not ready to make nice. She's not ready to back down. She's still mad as hell, and she don't have time to go round and round and round. It's too late to make it right. She probably wouldn't if she could. She's mad as hell, can't bring herself to do what it is you think she should. It's months. I saw someone tweet, a wonderful tweet. Sorry, you guys, I'm on one. Um... A wonderful tweet. I found some of Jax's alleged Adderall, allegedly, um, that said, normalize having, hating your uh, cheating ex. Normalize it. Normalize having rage for someone who did that to your damn life. Normalize that. That's okay. Why does she got to play nice? Why does she have to months after go, I'll listen to him. He's a dummy. He's a dumb, dumb, dummy. The way he speaks to these women, he's disrespectful as... He is horrible. He's a, a victim, but he's not the victim, but he wants to be the victim. He's rude. He's rude Jude with an attitude. He is trying to continue to paint this narrative. He's poking at Ariana, poking, 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 poking. Well, guess what? You're going to get the claws, sir, and you're not ready for it because you're not smart enough. Intellectually, you can't keep up in a war of the words with basically anybody. Probably that's why you went to Rachel Raquel. No offense, all offense, but uh, Rachel Raquel outsmarted you. Luckily for Rachel Raquel, I was listening to her podcast. She had that publicist that was like, oh, I see through his bullshit because he was talking about brands and we'll talk about that at a later date. But even Rachel Raquel got smart to you, sir. You're not clever. That's why you got to do all those weird things. You're trying to be so weird when you're 60. Like, look at me. I'm wearing Punky Brewster's sweater vest. Mm, I have nail polish. I'm appropriating woman culture, even though I treat them like shit and I'm a misogynist. Mm, look at me. That's why. Because you're just, you're not clever. Okay. So, ugh, so he starts poking. He's outside. And then Brock 
has already talked with Sheena. They had Schwartz over and they're talking about the K situation. Somehow Brock, Mr. New Zealand, somehow he is a, Katie, Katie, she's just, you know, she's just not right. It's not right. Brock. No, 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 Brock. No, 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 Brock. No. Shut up. You do don't, who cares? You need to worry about why your wife has 56 people's locations. You need to take care of Sheena. She told you she's going through a mental health crisis right now. She's got OCD and she's got 56 people's locations. You know how hard it is to keep up with 56 people? I don't even like 56 people. Okay, so let alone keep up with their location, you need to focus on that. Who cares what Katie does with her vagina? It ain't it ain't yours. It ain't your vagina. That is not your baby door. You have no say. Mm -mm. No, 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 sir. Mm. Zip it. Zip it with that. You know, and Schwartz is like, yeah. And Sheena's like, I, I don't want to get involved. I don't want to get involved because I feel like if I say anything, Ariana's just going to throw me out to the trash. Ah! And, uh, okay. So... Tom is um, walking by and Ariana's just, she, she told you she wasn't ready. She told you she wasn't ready. She told you she didn't want him around, but we're forcing it. We are forcing it. I really could have had a season where we just saw Ariana work through it and then Tom work through it and not have this kind of uh, pushing of this like false narrative that oh, if you guys don't let Tom slide on this one and not have consequences for his adult shitty actions, he'll hurt himself. He'll stop singing karaoke. If we wouldn't have had that, you know, so badly, if we wouldn't have had so much jealousy within the cast, um, we could, I could have just watched them process from afar. Cause anyone who's been in a shitty relationship or dated someone who treated them poorly, like Tom treated Ariana with the cheating scandal and such, they don't, you, we don't want to watch another chick have to just constantly be triggered by some asshole. You think that's fun for us? No, that is not fun for us. It's either triggering for us or it's extremely frustrating and makes us mad. And we're just like, why is this happening? So she told you. So Tom's, this is fresh off scandal, fresh off the reunion, Fresh off him letting Maya in the room and, um, you know, uh, locking her in there and then her having to go almost die and go to the emergency uh, vet and have $6,000 to, you know, save her life, thankfully. And Lala, Miss Lala was like, oh, Ariana, we're eating pizza again. Tell me more about this and thing. Well, what are we going to do? What are we going to, what are you going to do? Who's going to be the go-between? What do you care? What do you, are you the go-between, Lala? Were you there? Were you over there? Because I don't remember any stories where you were over there, particularly. I think Kristen Doty was probably over there more than you were over there. Were you over there in the beginning? Were you Brad? Were you Logan? Were you one of them who was really helping out? I mean, Kristen Doty was like a go-between for a little bit. Were you there? I don't remember that. I don't remember hearing that. So what do you care? What do you care who's, who's doing that? They'll figure it out. Well, I just think it's so unhealthy and I think you're unhealthy. I think the relationship and the things that you have going on with Randall and have for a long time is unhealthy and you got to figure that out. And I think you don't know who you are and you should figure it out. So work on that. I don't have time for this. I wanted to cheer for you and you're making it damn near impossible. So she was like, tell me more, tell me more, give me more tea, give me more tea. What, what was this, this thing, you know? And then Sandoval, she says, well, the dog, uh, the attempted dog murder. And I was like, oh, oh. and he was like, he stopped. And Brock said, well, wait, okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, see, see, wait, Ariana, see, you're saying, mm, near, who's the dog murder? Who, is it Tom? Is it Tom? Because I teach you guys I was in orgy. But remember. There was two vaginas and two dicks. So that evens out, not gay. Okay, you remember the Sheena? Sheena, you remember? Okay, who's the team to do kill? You, Brock, you know. You, you live with Sheena. She's following 56 people's locations, and you don't know that Tom almost killed her dog? Sheena knew when she was at the emergency vet, allegedly. Sheena's got a tracking location on Maya, allegedly. Sheena's the one that called Ariana and was like, something's wrong with Maya. She's not moving a lot. She's up in your bedroom. I got it on the location. Do something. Allegedly, Sheena saved Maya's life, okay? So you know. And he's like, nee? Who, who's, the, who's the dog? Who's the dog whisper? Is he? It's. And Tom's like, oh, she's talking about me, huh? Because Ariana, huh? 
And Ariana was like, don't talk to me. You almost killed my kids. This is my house, the house I had with my kids. And I think he thought she was talking about real like human children. And she clearly was saying her fur babies were her children. And you almost mited them. Okay. Oh my God. Well, apparently, yeah. And, and I want, I don't know if she never answered this, Shawnee, but that's a great question. Shawnee says, how did Sheena not track Tom and Raquel? Well, she did say that Raquel, when she started having the affair, turned off her location on Sheena. Well, has Sheena ever said what month that was in? Cause that would give us a great time frame of around when it got pretty serious with their relationship, you know? Oh my goodness. Okay. So, um, then they go in and the, the, the raw vulnerability and anger coming out of Ariana, first of all, warranted. Second of all, she warned you. She, it's like, you're going to go up to a, you know, a dog bites. You're like that, uh, that dog bites. It's had horrible humans because, you know, I just believe that's the only reason dogs really bite, but I'm sure there's other reasons, but half the time I'm like, they probably deserved it. Um, the humans. So, you know, the dog bites, but you're just sticking your hand in its mouth. And the dog's like, don't do that. Don't. And you're like, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. And then you get bit and you go, oh my God, she's such a bitch. She's such a raging bitch. Because Tom pokes. He pokes. Listen, you are bringing yourself, you are pushing yourself down everyone's throat. And you are basically, I can't be alone. And you're you're only doing it because you want to steal the friendships from Ariana. When she showed up at that night when you guys were all out at the bar and you had to take a SHIT, you told everyone because you're a real classy guy, um, you were so mad when she showed up and got all that attention. You're mad about that Duracell. You're mad about all the brand deals and all the success and the money while you sing horrible karaoke. I get it. You're mad. So you're poking, you're poking, you're poking. And then Ariana was like, and you couldn't handle it. You couldn't handle it. And when it comes to her fur babies, you need to take this one and apologize. And they went at it. Like she, I loved her. I loved, I didn't love it for her because I know she doesn't even want to have any communication with him. But it is completely normal for her to feel that anger this soon after something so scandalous and so cruel that he did to her. Um, it's completely normal. And anyone who says it's not, I, then you must be a, I don't know. Maybe you're a Tom Sandoval. I don't know. But to feel that kind of like anger at someone who not only did that, but continues to, you know, be in your life due to this home and this, you know, a uh, business deal that you entered into when you were together but continues to paint a narrative like you're the evil one and not atone or accept any accountability. I think that was totally normal. He is, he is lucky. That's all he gets. You know what I mean? Like she has yelled at him so seldom. And then he was like, oh, Schwartz, that happens all the time. She does that. Duh. This is what I've done with my whole relationship. Uh, no, no, Tommy, Tommy, no, Tommy, stop that. You're not a good actor. Rachel Raquel said it on her podcast. You're a horrible actor. I do agree with her on that one. Very bad. Very, not even lifetime movie worthy. Like it's bad. It's super bad. All right. No, Tom, we don't believe that. No, you pushed and pushed and pushed and continue to push this woman and try to embarrass her and try to get people to hate her and offer the show. You tried to replace her with her friend. I mean, you disrespected her to the to the highest degree. Why the fudge would she ever want to have a conversation with you? He brings up the emails. He says, oh, when he said, oh, my God, sometimes I just I think I just like black these things out when he said, Ariana, you need to put your big girl panties on and get back to my email. Bitch, stop. You know, nobody owes you an email. No one owes you an email. Get your hotmail ass out of here. Her lawyer will be dealing with him. Well, you better do this. No, 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 no. With that fourth grade comeback, go home, go home, wash your nails off, read a book, get into some therapy. I'm not, none of this screamy, weemy orgasm therapy either. I'm talking real sit down, figure out what the fridge is wrong with you. 
feels like an emotional <laughs> orgasm. Nasty, nasty ass. He he thinks he's done something because he like tried to rakey it like Jax. You've done nothing. This is Tom really thinks I've been working on myself. Oh. Like the year of just realizing stuff, and everyone around me were all just like realizing things. That is him, honestly. Yeah, I've just been like doing stuff on, realizing things on. Yeah, but Ariana's still a bitch. No, Tom, she don't have to get back to your email. No. And I've seen people be like, oh, how is Ariana going to be so emotional or invested or angry? She's already with someone else. That don't, you think that shit doesn't follow you for years? You think when someone disrespects you or emotionally abuses you or any of that stuff, that doesn't just go away because you find a better relationship that sits with you. That's a process. Ariana is in a grieving process. I don't understand why we can't give her a freaking season to grieve this douchebag. You know, I wish she didn't have to, but she has to. I wish that, you know, she could just feel better, but she can't because she actually did care about this asshole. And it's a grieving process. And guess what? One of the steps of the grieving process is anger. And she's at that step. She's at that step. He did. No matter what opportunity she has in brand deals, these people are thinking in terms of brands and money, and they're not thinking of things in terms of the heart. And I get they're all reality stars, and this is benefiting Ariana in a way financially, but that doesn't heal the heart. Like, be a freaking human for a second. The woman, despite whatever problems they had in their relationships, she didn't think it was going to go down like this. She didn't think. Now she has to think in the back of her head, can I even trust someone when I leave to grieve the death of a family member? He's going to be boning someone in my bed because that's what Tom Sandoval did. This isn't just everybody cheats. This is she's grieving the loss of people she loves. And instead of going with her to grieve, he fucks her friend in their bed. Are you kidding me? That's going to take some time to get over. And people that say they would just be over it because they're in a new relationship, they're lying to themselves and they're only going to repeat it and end up with someone else who's like that. That she could still be in shock for all we know. I don't know. It's a, unless you've been through something like this and it's happened to you where your whole world just flipped upside down in a short period of time when you didn't expect it, which it appears that that's how this went down, then I don't know if you can understand this feeling. Sure, she's killing it. She's getting all these deals and she loves it, but she still has these trust things in her heart. Unfortunately, she fell in love with the douche nozzle. And now she has to process this trauma. It's a freaking trauma. Whether people, even people that, hate Ariana for whatever reason, you have like on a human level, this is a trauma that Tom caused. He could have easily said, Ariana, I'm not happy. I'm leaving. He could have easily said that. That is the easiest thing you can do. Anyone who says it's not is a damn liar. And the only reason he didn't want to do it is because he's a selfish prick and he was afraid he would make the wrong mistake. And he thought, hey, I have these brand deals with Ariana and I don't want to ruin that. I can have my cake and eat it too. And I'm a chicken shit. That's why he didn't do it. It wasn't to save Ariana. It wasn't because she was threatening to take her own life. And also way to go with the sensitivity of mental health that we're supposed to have for you, despite you've been outing and disrespecting all of the women's uh, mental health, like Ariana and Rachel Raquel. So why should we give a F about yours? Oh my goodness, you guys. Thank you, Stephen, for the super chat. Stephen says this, yes, this was only three months post reunion. Give her time. Have you never seen Buffy the Vampire Slayer? It's a beautiful thing. She has this moment in season two after she has sex with Angel and it breaks the quote unquote gypsy curse that was put on him because he uh, experienced true um, happiness, which is, oh my gosh, talk about the patriarchal and like misogynist undertones of that to be like a woman would bring out the evil in a guy simply with her vagina. Like, give me a break. But I digress. So all of a sudden he becomes Angelus, the vampire, uh, the evil version of himself before he got his soul back. It's a long story. Watch the show. It's amazing. And she has this moment where now he's jealous and he's just disrespecting her, trying to kill her friends, trying to kill her, just being a real Tom Sandoval. Okay. And, uh, she has to, you know, be in one of these battles when they're trying to end the world, him and the other vampire friends and things. And this, he 
they were fighting, like physically fighting because she's, you know, the slayer and she's, you know, there's one girl in all the world who will, you know, defend us from the vampires, the evil and the forces of darkness. She's the slayer. It's her calling. She was called. She didn't choose it. And um, he says, you can't kill me. You can't. And he's saying horrible things to her and he's done horrible things to her. And she looks at him and she has this moment where she could stake him. He could be dead. But she loved this man at one time. She remembers the good times despite him being a murderous demon now in her face that could destroy the world. And instead she kicks him straight in the balls and she says, give me time. And in time, guess what? She killed him. But you need time. You got to time. You need time. We need time. The heart needs time. We're not all robotic asshole narcissists like Tom Sandoval. She needs time. So she'll, she'll be free of him, but she needs a freaking minute. And she told you people she needed a minute. She needs her Buffy minute. Give her a damn minute. Oh my goodness. Layla said, I listened to Ryan Bailey's interview with Terry Maloney, Katie Maloney's mom on my way to work this AM. And when Terry said, Sandy got in her face and screamed at her. Oh my God. Which was cut out to protect it. Yeah. Yeah. I remember this. I remember them talking about this on Lala's podcast, I think. And her brother, I think one of her brothers had to step in Katie's brothers. That's who Tom Sandoval is. This is who this man is. This is a pattern of behavior. Why are we pretending? He, we can save him. He don't care. He love yelling at a woman. This is a pattern. This is a personality. This is who this person is. Mm -hmm. That's who he is. He's the villain. He's a bad guy. He continues to be. Oh, Joshua, it's so intense, but it's so good. It is. It's so good. It's so heartbreaking. <sighs> Season two of Buffy, you guys, if you're not onto it, it's never too late. It's never too late. But I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, I'm glad you guys remember that episode. But yeah, she literally said, he's like, you can't kill me. You can't kill me. He's taunting her and she just kicked him in the nuts. And he's like, because even vampires have balls, very cold balls. OK. And she said, give me time. And that's what she did. Yes, witness. He's a manipulator. He's gross. He's gross. All this show is proving to us is that society really does hate women. Like it is is pretty evident with this shit. And it's all too common for us women who watch. We're like, yep, that's how it goes. Somehow you had the perfect storm of like a woman to rise from the ashes of Tom Sandoval in the scandal and for people to support her. And it was a beautiful thing. We could have all the women coming together and still they gave us a redemption arc for the fucking douchebag who cost it all. And I was like, what? What? You must think we're stupid. You must think we're stupid. Because I don't care. I don't care. Ariana even said, I'm going to call the police. You're harassing me. She said she was going to call the police. <laughs> she was like, hello, 911. Yeah, there is a man here who is wearing, I am pretty sure, a child's sweater. Mm-hmm. And his nails are painted weird. Uh-huh. Can you get over here, ASAP, P-I-M-P? Thank you. Bye-bye. She said she was calling the police because she's like, stop talking to me. Stop talking to me. You're talking to me. And he runs back in. What kind of man does that? What kind of man goes back in to fight women after everything he's done he wants to hurt her he was born to hurt her god i'm getting my buffy quotes out now but i'm serious like he wants to hurt her this it's it's cruel it's cruel and they all sat there silent as he he was they were going back and forth about the house and him saying put your big girl panties on wash your little girl panties. Okay, sir. Cause you ain't watch it, washing your Hanes her way. We heard they're dirty and they crusty. He's toxic. You know, it's, you need to, you got to give yourself time and your friends who frick, I get it's a reality show, but if these people are your friends, they would give you that time. And they would, I would be freaking, um, what's her name? Um, in sex in the city, Charlotte in sex in the city. When Big stands carry up at the freaking altar again, because Mr. Big is a toxic piece of shit that we had to endure for all those seasons. And Charlotte steps in front of Carrie and she's no, when he tries to go follow up with her, she puts her finger out. And that's what a friend does. That's what a true friend would do. They would know, not whatever this is, whatever Lala is doing. And Porsche, I mean, at, at this point with Sheena and Brock. So 
Then Tom Lee's like, I'm going out with Kyle Chan and we're going to make bracelets. Good for you. And then uh, Schwartz and Katie are having a talk about the Max thing. And Ka uh, Katie is like, she's she's like, I'm loving it. She's like McDonald's out there. She's like, I don't care. I am wearing a T-shirt that has a bra and panty on it. And she's telling him he doesn't know how to dress. And she, he's like, you don't know how to dress. And he's like, Max, really? And I kind of think Schwartz is, I'm just going to tell you guys a secret because there's only 400 people here just under. Um, hit that like if you haven't already. But I think Schwartz is... Um, I think he got a little cuck tendencies. I think he, I think he liked it. I think he likes thinking about that. I'm just going to put it out there. He's a little, a little cookie, a little cookie. You know, I think he would, he'd be like, did you record it? No. Cause we're not like your sleazy friend Scandival that we don't record people without their consents. We don't film them without their consent, but I think he likes it. I think, yes, he's like an elf on the shelf. He's like, I think he likes it. He likes it. Linda P says, Jillian, your analysis in this chat is what I wanted the show to be, not the garbage they're putting out, Linda. I agree. I agree. I really, yes. Steven, yes. Total cuck. He's cuck. He's got cuck energy. He's got cuck energy. Just like, oh, okay. And then Katie, at one point when she was walking away from Schwartz, when they just agreed, like, she's like, fine, I won't have sex with any of your friends. And she looks at the camera like, and I was like, Katie, you fuck all his friends. Go, go fuck all his friends. That one, that one. Fuck, fuck them all. Fuck. I'm sure YouTube is going to demonetize this video because I keep saying the F word, but fuck them all. Oh, you, if he just talks to someone, go fuck them. Go fuck them. She already said, I will run a train to your restaurant if you don't start respecting me. <laughs> choo, choo. Like, who cares? Who cares? And Schwartz wants to put Katie in the same category as him because he's like, he's not even letting her speak. And she's trying to explain to him. And, and he's like, okay, so yeah, well, let's just, let's just throw it into the, we all, and she's like, no, 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 no. We're not equal. Bro, this isn't, mm -mm, mm -mm. no, no, but that's what he does. He tries to just like railroad the conversation and then just be like, it's okay. Blah, blah, blah. Just forgive me for all the things I've done. Cause there's things I'm sure that we don't know about that. He still needs to atone for, you know, all right, Katie, get it because you had to be with that guy. And the disrespect, Katie owes you nothing. She says, you're lucky you got a, yes, put your trains in the chat. <laughs> you guys are the best. Put your train emojis in the chat. Seriously, run a train. Do it. They were so disrespectful of Katie and her marriage, and Schwartz continued to be. And so get it, girl. Get it, girl. Come on, ride that train. And ride it. Choo-choo. Like, get it. It's a choo-choo train. Come on. Mm -mm -mm. I think I can. I think I can. Uh, yeah, Schwartz is like the king mansplainer, but he just, it's word salad. He just says a lot of things that don't make any sense. Sir, no, 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 no. Oh my God, look at all those trains. Come on around the train and ride it. Choo, choo. I mean, that is, yeah, we need to, we need to cleanse our, uh, our Schwartz energy with a little away in a manger. Away in a manger, no crib for his bed. Nope, it's not going to work. Hold on. Totally. That's like away. off. God, I love that. Lisa Barlow, that is a jam. Away in a manger, no crib for his bed. This guy that I haven't spoken to in, you know, however many months. All of a sudden, it's some sort of a uh, authority on who I am and how I live my life and what I think and feel. Well, that's interesting. Just like a man. Don't f with me, fellas. This ain't my first time at the rodeo. This ain't my first time at the rodeo, Schwartzy. So Schwartzy is, um, you know, he's trying to play it off like ah, I'm okay, and he knows there was fighting inside. And he's like, see, I was right. And Katie, she don't even care. She's just drinking red wine. And then Tom Sandoval leaves and Schwartz is going to leave too. And then he goes inside and he does this thing and he does it every time. And it's a heated situation. Ariana's emotions are up. Sandoval has just left. And Tom Schwartz is like, how's everyone doing? <laughs> and Ariana said, now I hate you again. Now I hate you just from association. Now I hate you too. And he's like, oh, me. Wah, wah. And you're like, yep, you, you can get it all day. Tom Schwartz can get it all day. You can get the smoke because you're ridiculous. You come in there with a little baby conversation starter. Me, me, me. Hi, I'm just Schwartzy. Me, 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 me. No, sir. 
talk like a man, get the man voice, walk in there, don't, and you, and you're trying again, you're trying to, you're trying to get at her too, you know, <sighs> and Ariana's just like, nope, you can get it, you can get it too, then we have to listen to Brock the next day as they're feeding little baby cute summer moon, Brock's like, well, who was the one yelling in the conversation, okay? Apparently, I'm from New Zealand. And when I had the orgy, remember, two vaginas, two dicks, but two vaginas, okay? Ye, ye, near, not, not because there was another vagina. Hi, Teddy. Because, no, no, the dick, I can't remember. But he was just <clears throat> talking about, Ariana was yelling. Yep, she was yelling. Mm -hmm. Yep, normalized women yelling. We can yell. We can be mad. We can be mad. How many times has Tom yelled at women? Hmm. How many times has Tom yelled at your wife, sir? How many times have you yelled at your wife? I'm sorry, but you can't tell a woman how to react to a situation when allegedly we got some DV in the past. Allegedly, 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 allegedly. So you don't know how to control your emotions either. And Sheena called your ass out and she said, sir, you just showed you. Are you going to shut up? You're going to let me talk. And I was like, tell him, Sheena, you tell him. And she said, Ariana is hurt. Okay. And it, it's him. Like he almost killed her dog. Okay. And he's like, eh. and you could tell he hated that Sheena told him. He was like, he did one of those. Like, and I was like, you need to shut up, Brock. This is one you need to sit out with your history. You got to sit it out because you too got a history of getting up in the, the, the woman's face allegedly. And that's what was talked about. What was that? Season eight? nine and katie's like i think brock did this because he wanted to get back at me because she was asking questions katie was like oh okay so brock has kids okay and they're on another continent okay okay and he doesn't see them oh, okay but why oh because okay he doesn't pay child support okay but why because he doesn't see them okay but why those are reasonable questions they are you know, and we were allowing you to grow and allowing your story like, OK, you and your ex, hopefully you figured it out. Hopefully you and the kids, hopefully you got caught up on that child support. We were letting it slide, Brock. But now that you want to get in the mix and you want to tell women how they can deal with their feelings and how they should and what's wrong with them and be problematic. Now we got to bring up your problematic past and we don't want to. But it's looking like things haven't changed. Your reaction to Ariana asserting herself and being angry is very problematic. So it looks like you haven't changed. Your reaction to your wife being like, slow your roll, let me talk, is problematic. I don't know if you're trying to like secure your spot, earn your paycheck, but this is a dirty ass way. Instead, you could have been the man to step in in that situation and say, hey man, it's getting heated. You've heard her. She She's dealing with something. Step away. Don't speak to women like that. Don't yell like that. Don't do that. But instead, you sat there with your popcorn being like, hey, Oriana, she's just, eh, eh, she's just she's so aggressive. Well, so are you, said your ex. I, I mean, it's, I don't know, but Sheena looks like she can't stand this man. And I don't blame her. He got a, He has an answer for everything. And it's always the wrong answer. Even when they're talking to Summer Moon about what they're doing that day. She's like, we have to work, which technically is true. She does have to work. And, you know, she probably doesn't want Summer Moon to be like, oh, she's missing out. You you don't tell a little baby toddler, we're going to go to the beach, you can't go. The toddler's going to go, I love the beach. What are you talking about? The dolphin? I don't can't see the dolphins? Shamu? What? Sandcastles? I mean, ugh. And she was like, stop. And Brock's like, me, I know what I'm doing. This is what we do in New Zealand. We have mud. I played with mud. Okay. But I love that Sheena put him in his place. But I still wonder what's really going on with the Sheena situation. And I just think, Brock, you need to be focused on what's happening in your own home. Because your wife is calling out for you. And she is saying she needs your help. And she is struggling with her mental health and things postpartum. So maybe you should focus more on that than Ariana. And again, you worrying about, well, 
They got to talk. They got to need to go to talk sometime, didn't they? They never have to talk back if they don't want to. They don't have to talk. No, they don't have to. Sure, they're on a show together. But I'll watch the show with her not talking to him and I'll enjoy every second of him not getting any of her energy or words. Chickenhead, thank you so much. Chickenhead PK Neely coming in with the super chat saying, a broke has issues. He's no therapist. He is no therapist. He is no therapist. Oh my gosh. Um, right. Me too, Leslie. I got so annoyed with Brock last night. I was like, and the fact that he's rude to the mother-in-law. I don't know, Brock. You're just, seems like you're more like the Toms than you wanted us to see. But yeah. Mm, 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 mm. I hope she didn't get a 90 day fiance. That just makes me more proud of Sheena that she put the house just in her name. Cause sir, you know, if your um, if your fitness business uh, businesses aren't working, maybe you need to pick a new career path. Maybe you should be staying home with the little baby girl. <sighs> oh, I haven't even finished the after show yet, Lucy. It was uh, so I'll have to do a separate uh, live about that. Uh, so let's see what some of you guys are saying here. Four hundred five uh, watching live. Make sure you smash that like, you guys. Katie says, um, "Brock, worry more about you talking to your own kids than Ariana talking to your fellow piece of shit cast member." You're not wrong. They're on another continent. Anna says Brock keeps trying to tie himself to James in the after shows, and James seems to want none of that. Mm, I wonder why. Mm -hmm. Linda says, okay, Brock, say you find out tomorrow that Sheen and Sandoval have been screwing for the past seven months. Ooh, in your bed the whole time. Sandy has been acting like you're your, your bestie. Will you be over it in three months? Yeah, Brock. I don't know if Brock would ever get over it. He would get his little bungees. They would be all missed up up his butt. I have not seen Strictly Ballroom. No, I have not. Mm -mm. Uh, Pamela B says, I think I have the same boots Brock was wearing on the after show. Throw them away, Pamela. Throw them away, bad energy. Patent leather heels. <laughs> Irene says he wants a nanny around all day. Witnesses, maybe James is smarter than I give him credit for. Dana Maria says, remember when he expected James to post for his app? Oh, my God. And he was like, everybody do it for free. And James is like, can we get, can we get some money? And Brock's like, me? I mean, this is the man that had to be bailed out thousands of dollars from Sandoval. So is Sandoval, like, essentially, are you both working for him at this point because he paid you? I don't get it. I don't get it because you couldn't take care of it. So now Sandoval is your boss because he had to give your wife money during the panic -hookin? I don't know. Uh, Tiara says, uh, the Valley cast were on Ariana's side. Oh, thank goodness. Even Jax's ass in the after show. And it was in that moment I decided to prioritize the Valley. Yes. I got to do a Valley recap tomorrow. Your budgies. Yes, your budgies are all smuggled up. Smuggled up your bum. Did the budgies. Kristen says, I just finished watching this episode and the after show. Both are equally frustrating. Oh, my gosh. Um... Brock can replace Ant. Yeah, Brock, why don't you become yeast? I got a job finally, Sheena. I'm working for Sandoval. I'm his, uh, pick up his underwear and I smell them and I say if they can be worn for another four days or not. Yes, that's what I did. I would do. Right, Lavender Girl? I would love to see how they all act in Ariana's place. Oh, yes. No, I saw Jax on social media and he was like, oh, la, la, way to go with the garbage bag read. It's like, that's not even a good read anyways. Um, no offense, all offense, Lala, but you can do better because I get that you're like, don't you have a garbage? Aren't you like sponsored by a garbage bags? But coming from you, it just screams jealousy that you want the trash bag sponsorship and you don't got it. So, mm-mm, mm-mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, now Jax is back to the Toms because we knew he would be. He just was team Ariana when uh, in the beginning so that he could profit off of it. Jax is the same Jax we've known since the beginning. Jax trash is going to keep trashing. That is, yes, and so jelly. It's just, it's gross. It's not a good read when it comes from a place of jealousy. It's just not. When you want what she has. Mm-mm. Courtney says, why was Sandoval carrying like three purses? Oh my gosh. Great question. Great question. Because he's appropriating women culture, which I, again, <laughs> like tongue in cheek here, but also 
Uh, you treat us so poorly, you hate us, but you're stealing our style, our clothes, our fashion, our makeup, and obviously, you know, all that genderless go ahead. But not when you're an asshole, not when you're an asshole, not when you're a misogynist, not when you treat women like that. You know, men wear whatever you want, makeup, purses. If it makes you feel good, do it. But not when you're an asshole, not when you disrespect us. You can't have our stuff. We made that cool. And you three purses, what are in your three purses? Okay, is it the is it the money you owe all around town? Are you a drug meal for Diddy? What's going on? That might actually be a decent gig for him right now. Allegedly. Obviously, allegedly. Oh my God. Yes. No misappropriating our stuff. Stop it. It's drugs. It's gonna be drugs. It's Adderall. Maybe. Maybe he's the new dealer in the valley. Obviously. You know, allegedly. For entertainment purposes only and for jokes. Okay. Um, and the heels, I mean, for men that hate women, they sure want to, you know, take our stuff. They want to wear our shoes. They don't want to literally walk in our shoes to understand the struggle. But you'll find that the biggest misogynist, we've seen this, ask any woman in the chat, the biggest misogynist, sexist pieces of shit are the ones that want to wear our undies. Always, always. It's like, hey, jealousy. Mm hmm. Denise says in the purses are condoms and drugs, alcohol and nail polish. <laughs> oh, my God. OK, so then we got to get to the dam. Next day, they got to go to the beach and Sandoval's coming. And Ariana's like, I know this motherfucker's on the way because he had his net shirt uh, out um, in the dryer. And sure enough, there he is, because guess what? When you date someone as long as Ariana dated Tom. You can predict these things. You can't predict everything. They can sneak up on you. And did you notice that when Tom, before the, um, so when he went out later after he was done yelling at Ariana and triggering her and poking her and telling her to put her big girl panties on, he went out with Kyle Chan, who I'm just like, Kyle Chan. And Schwartz. And uh, and he was there and he was, um, what was he talking? Oh, they were talking about the Anne thing. Uh, and that he already had a new assistant named Craig. I'm like, what? But he hasn't fired Anne yet. He's just stringing her along like he strings on, along all women. He doesn't know how to treat them. That's when he showed up in a 1980s Care Bear Stare uh, sweater vest. And he couldn't pull it off. You couldn't, sir. Mm-mm. That would be like a cute, uh, quirky woman outfit. Would look so cute with like a little button up underneath. But no, no, he was rubbing his hairy nipples all over it. It wasn't good. And um, they were talking about, oh, this is when he decides to tell Kyle Chan and Schwartz that Ariana is the laziest person. And he cleans the litter box more. Well, when it tends to fall upon the person who has the most free time. And sir, you don't have all the things Ariana has going on. And how can she be lazy and do all that stuff? And again, another way for him to talk shit and put her down. The last thing on his mind after everything he's done, a, a normal person, a person who truly feels bad and wants to do atone for their sins and uh, didn't want to hurt this person they say they allegedly loved, would not take every opportunity to continue to shit on her. You've already done enough. You, you've done enough. And with this litter box stuff and, you know, he's doing more and you should, and you should, and you should, especially if you think you want to keep that house. Well, you better keep it the best it can be, sir. So he's there calling her lazy. She doesn't do shit. And I'm thinking, and none of these dudes checked him. None of these dudes. You could tell Schwartz was like, why? Well, you know, he gets like the baby way out by being like, uh, well, I, I don't want to say anything. No, your 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 silence says everything. That that's the kind of man that you want to hang out with because you're just like him. And when Sandoval is like, I'm getting better. I'm getting my ego in check. Sir, <laughs> that's why I got them purses. They are carrying your ego. And I don't even know why you have an ego. You should be ashamed. I would be ashamed. I would be ashamed. Shame, shame. I know your name. Oh, that scene was horrible. Is there eating oysters? And he's like, I like a fat oyster. Women, women out there. Hi, hi. Hi, it's Jolene. Hi, I just want to tap. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, good to see you. I love you. I love you guys so much. Um, Can you stop 
having sex with him, please. He doesn't deserve it. Yeah. So much undeserved vagina. That's how he talks. He continues to make jokes like this. And he hasn't earned the right to do that. And he continues to shit on women and blame them for all his problems. And now he's stringing his assistant along. And no, thank you. Can we like not? Yeah. Just stay away. Okay. Hi. Please stop. Don't do it. Don't do it, girl. Don't date him, girl.com. Can he just be that website? Is that still a website? He should just be that website. Please stop. Please stop. He has no shame. Mm -mm. Oh, God. Not to fertilize the eggs. I hope not, Yvonne. Mm -mm. Yeah, Tom's looking for a Stepford wife. He's looking for a lady he can steal her clothes, steal everything from her, appropriate everything, and then shit on her. But please, God, please, ladies, oh, I guarantee the sex can't be good. Ariana says he don't wash his balls. That means his butthole, his peen, all dirty, all dirty. Evelyn says narcissists have shame deep down and their blame, anger, and projection serves to keep them from feeling the shame. Hmm. Yeah, that would explain this asshole for sure. Oof, 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 oof. Oh, mm -mm. yes, everyone, if you could please forward this message to every woman, you know, especially any woman in the L.A. area or in any of the cities that Tom Sandoval will be, unfortunately, touring with his uh, horrible karaoke band with Justin Masturbator, Jason Masturbator, whatever his name is, Jason Bader, Masturbator, his little friend who puts the laptop over his boner. Mm -hmm. If we could just let them know, because they're just this show is just full of just Mad, mad little jealous bitches. Bling, bling, bling. Bitches is mad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and the 500 laxatives, he said that so cavalierly. And the fact that Ariana, I mean, she took, she was the responsible person and took the dog to the emergency vet, paid the money. Um, and he was just like, yeah, yeah, no biggie, no biggie. It's it's actually not common, Tom Schwartz and Tom Sandoval, for you to, for a dog to get into 500 laxatives. Why do you have 500 laxatives? I didn't even, do you got the Costco size laxatives? You're that full of shit? Like who needs 500 lax? How long do you think you're living for? That's ridiculous to me. That is crazy. Yeah, Nene always knows. Bling, bling, bitches mad. Bling, 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 bitches is mad. <laughs> It's probably, it's probably his diet, allegedly. He might be one of them, like, super poopers. You know? They're just... Who knows? Who knows? Yep. Uh, Miss Diamond is right. Judge Jolene, where do I have my... I don't have my little gavel. It's somewhere. But I've ruled. Okay? And Tom is a jealous bitch. He jealous. He don't deserve it. He's a lint licker. You son of a biscuit-eating bulldog. What the French toast? Did you think I wouldn't find out about your little doo-doo head cootie queen? Who are you calling a cootie queen, you lint licker? Pickle you, come cry. You're overreacting. No, Bill, overreacting was when I put your convertible into a wood chipper. Stinky McStink face. You hoboken. New Orbit Raspberry Mint cleans another dirty mouth. For a good clean feeling, no matter what. Uh, yep. Judge Jolene has ruled, and my ruling has come in. The rulings are real, the rulings are final, and the ruling is he does not deserve the vagina. No more vagina for the sandy butt. Sing it with me, doggies. You let the doggies eat the laxatives and the skewers. You belong in the sewers. Yeah. Sir, hi. Come over here, baby. Come here. See, he was maybe about to go try to chew a core, but guess what? Mama's like, uh-uh, uh-uh. Teddy's like, we got to wrap this shit up, Mom, because they want to go for a W-A-L-K. All right? Chickenhead PK Neely, thank you so much for the super chat saying uh, that is two lifetime supplies of laxatives. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Come here, Teddy Bear. Come here, little baby boy. Oh, you're such a sweetie. You guys want a treat for being so good? It's not a laxative, okay? Here, Bucky. A little for you. Teddy, come here. Come. You want some? You want some tits? Treaties? He's like, mm-mm. You already bought me when you gave me a little bone. Uh, coming in here, a dog bone. And 
It is time, mom. It's afternoon WALK time. Okay. Uh, thank you, Shawnee, for the super chat with the little heart. I appreciate that. Okay. So the last scene of the day is they got to go to this friggin', um, they got to go to the ocean. Like I've seen you went to Santa Monica or something. I'm like, damn, they should have went to Malibu. Santa Monica is, can be such a mess. James was right. You got to worry about the parking. And then it says, and if you walk the stairs and you park across like in downtown Santa Monica and not that parking lot, every corner smells like pee and it's just a real urine experience, you know, just all the urine. So they're on the beach and Ariana's like, Tom's coming. Yep. We know Tom's coming, unfortunately. And then Tom rolls up and these disrespectful pricks have the nerve to then start talking to Tom about this dating thing they're going on. And Tom and Tom ha are saying, Tom Sandoval actually said, well, Katie and, um, Ariana have moved on or dating other people. So it's time we do too. You and Tom Schwartz never stopped. You've always been, you were like super America. We never stopped. You were always dating other chicks when you were with them, when you were supposed to be faithful and in monogamous relationships, you were eh -eh, in other people. You never stopped dating Tom. What are you talking about? This thing where I've been, I've been single. It's like, bro, you haven't, you haven't. So then freaking Brock is, uh, bringing up oh tom is you know they're talking about sheena and who's sheena's like at one time everyone here has flirted with me and it's like okay thanks sheena we didn't need that um yeah we remember how this show started okay cool and then you know brock is in like oh tom is that how it started is it how it started with you and rachel Raquel? huh why would you say that ariana's like listening to all this she's looking down her phone she's uncomfortable schwartz's like Katie, do you want to come with us to the singles events? Oh, you insensitive pricks. And then Ariana goes, can you please like shut the frick up? Like this is so disgusting. You bringing up Rachel Raquel in such a cavalier way. You asshole. And they're like, what? And then they start yelling at each other. And I, by that time I was like, Brock, Brock, you can go straight to jail. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. You bunghole. I was so sick of this man. Oh, okay. We're going to wrap it up. We're going to do a quick commercial break while I make sure Teddy doesn't have to go potty um, and not close him in a room. Right, Teddy Bear? He's like, yeah, you tell me, Teddy. Okay, we'll be right back after this commercial break. Welcome to Goth Talk. I'm Cersei Nightshade. And I'm Azrael Abyss, Prince of Sorrow. Tonight, we're coming to you live from Suncoast High School, where just down this hall, the pathetic day dwellers of the class of 1998 are celebrating the tawdry amusement known as the prom. Hey! This is wrong. What? You. Doing my homework, it's wrong. Well, I was just trying to help. It's like I'm taking advantage of you or something. You're not taking advantage of me. The square of the hypotenuse of a right triangle is equal to the sums of the square of the other two sides, baby! It would be different if we were like... But now, we just... You know or whatever no time there's never any time i don't have time to study i'll never get into stanford i'll let everyone down i'm so confused i can't do this anymore it's okay you're right it's okay everything will be okay yeah i just need one of these pills you mean you really are taking drugs no in a way it was wrong but I just have a feeling that this is going to be really good. I don't know. So whoever's going to tutor you, their name is next to yours. Brain? Krakow? Are you... Brain? Brian. I need them! Jesse, give me those! I need them, Zach! I what? have to sing! Jesse! You can't sing tonight! <laughs> So, anyway, uh, The Odyssey is like this real long book, right? And I don't uh, believe I... this. I don't. You, you, like, do this? 
This is like how you live? Yeah. Welcome to Goth Talk. I'm Cersei Nightshade. And I'm Azrael Abyss, Prince of Sorrow. Tonight, we're coming to you live from Suncoast High School. We're just down there. Why are you so obsessed with me? Why are you so obsessed with me? All right, you guys, thank you for the commercial break so we could let Teddy out to go potty. Uh, yes, this damn show. And I want to recognize a couple of the super chats. Obviously, Shawnee, again, thank you. Chickenhead PK Neely, that is two lifetime supplies of laxatives. Justine King coming in with the super chat saying, to my eyes, on the prior episode, Sheena and Brock planned the scene when he outed Katie. <gasps> dirty, dirty, dirty. Ah. Uh, when she sat at the table and said, ask Brock, she was overacting and had a smirk on her face, barely concealing a smile. Ariana, you can't trust any of these people. Oh, Justine, thank you for that. And uh, Jill Christine, thank you so much for the super sticker, Jill. Good to see you in the chat. And Nicole Larson coming through. Thank you so much. Great show, Jillian. Thanks for the laughs. You are so welcome, you guys. Okay, so um, so at the beach, yeah, they're just making jokes. They're like, "Oh, we're gonna we're on this dating site, and we're gonna go." And um, Ariana's like, "Can you have? Let's see if we can listen to a little bit of the audio of it um, because it was just you could tell how hurt she was. She showed up to this beach day. She's doing her best to show up at these things. She knows Tom's trying to get the friend group all on his side, and he doesn't give a shit what happened or what he does or what he continues to do. And he's just a liar." And, um, well, that's on you. Not that's Sheena. not on me. I did not bring this up. Yeah. Well, the conversation subject matter is discussing because of you. So maybe you have it somewhere else. You guys, let's take a breather. Hold on. This is going to be a good beach day. Okay. So let me just rewind it just a little bit. This is a little bit. So this is where we catch, um, Tom Schwartz, uh, saying that Sandoval knew about his kiss with Sheena and Katie asks, uh, Sandoval. And he's like, I, I didn't know. So another lie. Cause Sandoval's a liar. Oh, Sandoval's a liar. Dang, you guys really did keep a secret. I literally forgot about it. I buried that shit. Almost every guy in this group has been flirty with me at some point. You included. It's more of like recipient of flirtiness. Is that what you told her cat when you guys shouted that whole thing? Dude, stop. That's such Brock, I'm sorry. What in the what in the world is this crocodile Dundee cowboy talking about? I <laughs> just told Raquel when you started the whole thing. E? E? Did you have an orgy? I had an orgy. I did. I did do. I did. It. Oh yeah, they were. Yeah, it's very fun. Mm -hmm. uh, what is this man? What in the Janelle Eason soon to be ex husband are you looking like this for? And you're laughing. Ew, Brock, Brock, Brock. Now I'm going to need a full report. Are we caught up on the child support payments? Are we seeing the kids? What's happening? Where are we working, Brock? Where's the money coming from, honey? Is it just the show? Is that why we're looking very desperado and we're doing these things? What's happening, Brock? Now I need a full report. I need it on my desk by Monday. Okay, I need you to get that to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, I need you to work on the weekend for that one. And Santa goes, oh, dude, stop. No, but he loves it. You know, that's such a loying fruit. Denise, thank you for the super chat. Denise says, hey, Jolene, thanks for making VPR bearable. Ugh, I'm trying, girl. Thank you. Thank you for saying I'm making it bearable. Uh, Tracy says, cocaine cowboy. It is me got the orgy with koalas. This is not gay. If a koala is there. Brock. Okay. All right. So then Ariana's got to listen to him make a joke. One of her best friends, Sheena, her husband, just months after this, her whole life is uprooted and who she thought she was going to spend the rest of her life with, her life partner, has betrayed her in such a big way and continues to just be an absolute douche. And Brock's over there making jokes. Okay. All righty. All righty. A low hanging fruit. Can you have this conversation not in front of me? Because it's fucking disgusting. Let's, let's do that. Well, that's on you, not That's Sheena. not on me. I did not bring this up. Yeah, well, the conversation subject matter is discussing because of you. So maybe you have it somewhere else. You guys, let's take a breather. Hold on. This is going to be a good beach day. Drew that line again. I thought the line was stupid. I thought it was immature. I thought they're not, it's, they're making it seem like Ariana, like it's Ariana's on the same level as Tom trying to cause problems. She told you she wasn't ready for this. 
And then Schwartz is like, we're going to have a nice day. No, we're not. We're never going to have a nice day at the beach with Tom Sandy, but there being a victim and not owning his shit and being an asshole. And with Brock making these gross jokes and with you guys continually lying, we're never going to have a good day again at the beach, Tom. So quit trying to make it better. Quit trying to, and you're not, you're making it worse and actually recognize the situation and maybe call your stupid friend out, call Brock out and Tom out in that and be like, that is, that is dirty, dude. And Ariana's right. Brock wouldn't have a joke to make if Tom didn't freaking do this. So it all comes back to Tom. Jeez. Oh, goodness. Oh, we got a commercial. Come Oh, come on. Now we got a damn ring commercial. So I felt for Ariana in that moment because it's like, can you have this conversation when I'm not around? It's like they're totally disregarding that she's there and she's still processing her pain. Her pain means nothing to them. They don't give a shit. They're more worried about Sandoval, the person that brought on all the pain, the one that had victimized people in the group. They're more worried about him feeling okay because he got sad when he did a naughty thing. Yeah, you should. You should feel bad. And I got depressed. Yeah, it's depressing when you blow up your whole life and you treat people like shit and you see that people are hurt by your actions. That should depress you. That should make you want to stay in bed for a little bit. That should make you want to rethink your actions and be a better person. That should make you think about your life. But no, no, no. These guys are such little baby douchebags. They can't have any accountability. It's crazy. Oh, my God. These commercials. Peacock, calm it down with the commercials. Hey, guys, where's Lala? She had to go to an eye doctor appointment with Ocean. Yeah. Yes. I met your new assistant today. Huh? The guy Craig. I love, I love Craig. You know Craig? So Anne doesn't work for you anymore. Um, I'm not sure yet. He's just working for me right now. But we'll see. I mean, I'm, I'm still figuring things out. Craig. He's going to be my assistant. That was fast. I did not see that. <laughs> I heard that she's out of a job. I didn't say that to her. You didn't fire her? I didn't fire her. Interesting. I told her to take, like, let's take a couple days off. I did not, like, fire her yet. Or... Yet? Like you're going to? I don't know. Oh. I'm still, like, figure. Sheena, quit questioning the man. He's going to have to yell, and he hates to yell. Or no, no, he loves to yell, but he's a cis male, and he can't yell at you properly. The thing is that, you know, as a cis male... Um, did you say cis? Is your voice yell, do whatever you feel entitled to do but as a cis as a straight male if i was a woman i could do that if i was a gay male i could do that but as a straight male if i raise my voice it's wrong <laughs> this idiot he can't wait to start yelling sheena you better back it up girl this who you want to be friends with denise thank you so much hey jolene oh i, I think i already read that one but i just appreciated it so i'm gonna read it again so thank you and pamela thank you so much for the super sticker all right let's keep listening because he's like she's just a they're just stringing her along and I have an HR bro. You no, you don't have an HR. You don't have a band. You don't have, um, the, the here, you don't have tone, you're tone deaf on so many levels, sir. You know, no, you don't have you HR. Need to have that conversation with her, I know I need to have that conversation with her. It's my assistant. Yes. I'll take care of it. Your assistant is looking for other work right now. If she thinks she got fired. He's saying he didn't fire her. Then she doesn't know that. I literally just texted her today. I like could really use some help as well. So, and she's looking for work. Give me a second here with my employees. Like, let me let me figure. Well, I, yeah, no, I know. I'm just saying that she was one looking day. for. Like, I there's protocols and things that have to happen. What are, like, what are protocols? What do you mean protocols? There's like HR. There's all kinds. Oh of things my like god. Yes. Do you have a human resources department? Yes, I do. Does Tom Sandoval really have a human resources department? The no. Answer is no. Yes, it's a business. Protocols. Like, I have all oh, like people. I have uh, workers' comp. I have all kinds of stuff. I have insurance. And if you really had HR, you'd be fucked, dude. If Anne's not there at the house, right, it's a mediate, then who does that for you right now? I haven't had a cross that bridge yet, so. Who's looking after Maya when Anne is not there? Anne's not Maya's, like, sitter do you feel that she's safe i do currently right now yes good, good. you guys are both great dog and cat parents here we go with schwartz that you know that is not true sir stop it stop it. you're both great he just locked the dog 
in a room for hours and didn't check to see if it was dog proof, a room that was closed for those reasons. I mean, everybody knows, every dog owner knows if you're going to leave your dog at home for a certain amount of time, if there are rooms you don't want them in, you close the door. And he didn't give a shit. So stop, Schwartz. Oh my goodness. I'm a dog and cat parent. What does that mean? They're mine, so. Do you agree with that when she says the pets are hers? No. No. I paid the adoption matter. fees. It does matter. It does matter. I paid the adoption fees, so I bought her. Are you going to fight for her? Uh, James, I don't know, man. Ariana fight paid her. the adoption fee. So that's it. So one bill that Ariana paid. I love Allie's like Ariana paid the adoption fee. So shut it, James. And then Tom says it's the one bill Ariana paid. Well, that's not true, Tom, because Lucinda told us she bought all of the furniture and she has half the house. So please stop. Really stop. You're really trying. You're really trying there, Tom, with your three purses. Oops. According to your rules, Ariana since you like applied for the adoption papers and paid for it and did all that stuff don't so my speak friend to me. found the don't house and like stop my people did the loan stop and like did, me. i did all the stop all the... speaking to me like literally stop speaking you're to speaking me. to me anything i do or say is obviously a trigger for ariana i had this yeah so shut the fuck up <laughs> like it is because of how you treated her you're a dickhead you disrespected her you disrespected her home. You disrespected your home. You disrespected yourself. You disrespected your dick. So shut up. Shut up. He's the one. Like, it's so crazy to me that he's just like, he's like, oh, you're talking to me. It is kindergarten. Lily A, thank you for the super chat. Lily says, you literally make me laugh out loud when you talk about Sandoval. I never noticed how immature he acts, looks, and sounds. So immature. So immature. The guy has zero emotional intelligence. He is a willfully ignorant douchebag. It's like crazy. He would be even more civil than Tom and Katie. He was like, I thought me and Ariana would be civil like Tom and Katie more so. I'm sorry. How? When you were boning her friend in her bed when her grandma was dead and the dog was dead. How, how did, how in your warped ass mind, it just shows again that this man needs to be held accountable. He needs people to stop bailing him out because he has got to the big old age of 72 years old. This man is retiree damn near if he had the money. Okay. You are too old to not know that this isn't going to end well for you. And why would you think Ariana would be like, okay. Yeah, this is great. What is wrong with you? You, I mean, bird brain city. Bird. Oh, God, Ariana, I thought we could be better. And why is it a competition? It's always been a competition with Schwartz and Katie. It's so weird. No one's competing. You lost. Oh, my goodness. And then he's. Oh, great. Leaves. That ain't nothing. Watch, watch how civil Ariana and I are going to be. Yeah. Delusional. Yes, you're delusional and you're cruel and you're an asshole and you're a liar. Okay. Because why would you, Tom, be civil with someone who treated you like you're treating her? I mean, I know you are, it's in, you're incapable of putting yourself in her shoes, but you wouldn't be. No one would be. You're asking for something that is completely irrational and not possible. It's cuckoo. And then Lala shows up with Logan, James's old friend. And I'm like, oh, great. This is going to be fantastic with her new sunglasses. And every scene she wears these new sunglasses, she gets worse and worse. So maybe it's the sunglasses. I don't know. But here she comes. How is everybody? Not good. He's literally trying to sit here and try to say, like, all kinds of shit. What is, what is he saying? This is why I will not do this again. Oh, you guys ready? keep doing this. Sorry. It wasn't my idea. Literally, he sits there and talks shit. He's the one who fucking ruined my entire fucking life. What the fuck did I just walk into? Can you do me a favor? Keep him away from me. But well, we've done that. He's over here with his tail between his legs. Not between summer. his legs because he's talking shit. I know so. his voice. That's why because he's between his legs. Well, we can hear. Brock, his tail has never been between his legs. His dick has never been in his pants. What are you even talking about? This man has shown zero humility, zero shame, zero um, apologies, like nothing. And Brock's like, he's over you with his tail between his legs. What do you What do you got to do? You just told us you don't got a job. You should have nothing but time to tell this man, to tell Tom Sandoval to calm it down. But yet there he is going, Ugh, I'm so annoyed. He's, it's just like, Ugh, so I don't want to talk about this. Ugh. What? Are, his tail between his legs? Are you kidding me? 
<sighs> Brock, my God, what is he jealous? Because now you know what it could be. Here we go. You guys, I think I know the reason because Sheena has now admitted, you know, her and Ariana have had makeout sessions. And we know that Sheena said in the after show, when she got with Brock, she had to stop kissing girls because he gets peanut butter and jelly about it. And that's okay. You don't have to let, you know, I wouldn't want my significant other making out with anybody else. Some people are cool with it. Um, you know, but I wouldn't be, but I think he's like, now he secretly hates Ariana. He sees Ariana as someone who could Mr. Steal your girl. Like she can steal your wife. That makes more sense. Cause I'm like, why is he getting, why, why do you have this big opinion about this? And you think, you think Tom has paid any penance within the group. You think he has shut up. You think he has, um, like let his ego go or that he has any ounce of humility and recognize what he has done without placing himself immediately then with a butt and then in the victim position. That is not true. Chicken head says, thank you for the super chat. Chicken head says who competes with your friends for being the best divorce. Who does that? Tom Sandoval does that. Tom Sandoval. He just looks at it like a business. Yeah, we go to the next spot. Me and Tom will go sit somewhere else. He's never going to fucking get it. What happened? He feels very comfortable fucking talking shit. And none of you guys put him in check. And it's really fucking disrespectful. I'm not saying that Ariana needs to forgive and forget. But I just think maybe it would be better if Ariana released some of this anger. It's just probably consuming a lot of her. James, this you said this one out too, okay? Because you got a lot of anger there, sir. And there are still reports of your anger. We got video that leaked of you yelling at Allie. We got Teddy Mellencamp running her mouth with uh, Tammy, Tammy Tamara from OC, about you being very aggressive and angry. So, again, the men. <sighs> oh, glass houses. These glass, they want to throw stones. It's like, please stop. Like, just stop. I just feel like she would be more at peace if she released. Either, you guys got to, like, kind of step in as men and be like, Bro, shut the fuck up. Because he is such a misogynist, he requires men, because that's who he respects, to put him in his place and say, dude, you got to shut the fuck up and fucking take it because you're the one in the wrong here. You think he's not taking it? He left. You also have to remember he's going to be in defense mode. And I'm so tired. I can't listen to any more of that. Um, uh, so... Uh, okay. Um, Ariana's hundred percent, right? It is, it falls upon other men to check men the same way it would fall upon with racism, the same way white people have to check other white people. When you see people being racist, you got to check that she got to check your privilege with their privilege. Men have to check other men when they're being disrespectful or misogynistic to women, because unfortunately we've also found that a lot of, you know, what we found, um, a lot of conversations, even regarding race for some reason, you know, well, I mean, there are reasons, uh, when a white person will explain it to another white person all of a sudden people might start to understand the same way a man has to explain it to another man because they don't respect women so he's not listening to women so these men in these times that would be the time to step up and say something so ariana is 100 percent right but she's just far more evolved than anyone on this any of the dudes on the show so they're just like huh what that's sexist are you saying only guys could talk to guys and you're like oh my gosh Oh my gosh. But instead, yes, they're going with the tired, angry, uh, woman defense. I saw, uh, NYC NP in the chat. Yeah. Not the angry woman defense. Uh-huh. Uh, projection must. Yeah. Nicole, I think he is projecting these issues with Sheena and Sheena's projecting and all that stuff. So it is like, you got to check this shit and you've got to man up and you got to do it. And then here comes Lauren from Utah with this tired ass take of, well, you know, just know he's on the, and he should be on the defense. Okay. But he also shouldn't be on the defense. Of course he's on the defense because he's wrong. But if he ever wants to really correct himself and become a better human, he needs to drop all of his airs. He needs to drop his ego and his armor and he needs that dashboard confessional, you know, hands down. This is the best day I can. He needs to just let it go. And Lala, we don't need you saving problematic dudes. I, after watching this, I was like, bring Randall back. I want Randall back on the, on the show for a season. And I want Katie and Ariana to go, but have you listened to Randall? Maybe Rand, you know, maybe he just, he doesn't know how to treat women. And he just, you know, maybe he thought, you know, he could get enough money together and yeah, did he scam people? But you know, you can call him out on it, 
but we got to invite him to the party and we got to hear his side of the story. Okay. Because he wants to be a good dad to his daughter. So we should listen to him. Do you think she'd appreciate that? No, she would not. So Ariana says, I don't need a devil's advocate. The devil's got too many advocates. And Lala's like, well, I just, Lala, stop. You asked everyone to never talk to Randall. Don't play pickleball with them. Sign an NDA. Don't talk about him now. Talk about him. Be his friend. Don't be his friend. You had them running around in circles for your relationship. But Ariana can't get a freaking season. Tom Sandoval, he don't like you. Him and Schwartz have talked so much shit about you. Oh, I was like, no, stop. What is going on? Rhonda says Lala in her podcast, uh, or Lala says in her podcast that Ariana didn't take up for anyone that got yelled at by Tom. That is not true. You can rewind the tapes. Ariana would literally be in her own house at her own party being like, Tom, we're not doing this uh, yelling at the women shit. There were so many times that Ariana uh, had her back. So miss me with that. I'm sure there were times that we can point out where she didn't or when, where she was putting Lala on check and saying, you know, um, trying to relate to her on the level after losing her dad and stuff and protect, uh, you know, trying to help Lala not to project her anger and stuff onto other people. Um, and this for Ariana, she's not projecting onto them. She's literally Tom is right there. And that is who she is angry at. And they're pushing him in her face. So Lala can say these. Uh, yes. Oh, sorry, Rhonda. You put it in there too. I got all excited. I'm like, that's not true. But which is a lie. She did multiple times. There are. There was a tweet and I screen grabbed it. And there was someone who beautifully, I don't know if it was a tweet or if it was an Instagram post. They beautifully highlighted all these times in which Ariana had the women's backs. Um, and I was like, oh, this is great. Um, and I don't know where I put it, but if I find it, I'll post it up. So Lala, Lala has got a lot of revisionist history stuff going on. And I'm just like, girl, this is, it's just a really bad luck for Lala. I, uh-uh. Mm, uh -uh. Um, one of the tweets said at this point, it's a race between Lala and Sheena, who is better at dumping all their trauma, all of which have nothing to do with Scandival or in support of Ariana onto Sandoval and making him apologize to them to make themselves feel better. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, uh, this person said, unlike Sheena, Ariana is a girl's girl. Case in point, this comment defending Katie. Um, someone commented, Ariana, if she had lost weight before the divorce, it might have helped about Katie. Ugh, what an asshole. And Ariana said, choke on a raw hot dog, you cretin. Oh my God. That's what Ariana does. Ariana has always been the beautiful feminist killjoy that we need on the show. The real, the one true feminist. There were moments maybe when Stassi was because she could really just like, she was just better at, I don't know if she'd be considered a feminist, but she attacked the men, <laughs> you know, she would go toe to toe with them, I guess. So, um, uh, I wish I could find this, but yeah, someone highlighted like literally every time or a bunch of times that Ariana had, um, the other ladies backs and it's just, uh, something's gotta be either something's coming out about Brock. He's projecting, or like you guys are, some of you are saying in the chat, he really is being pushed by production and wants to keep this paycheck, but it's gross. It is gross. So, um, yeah, Ugh. right. I don't blame Lala or Ariana for anything either right now. No. Yes. When did Lala get lobotomized? And she went 180, 180. And then one minute she's like, yeah, tell me more about that. Oh my God. He's a jerk. And then she's like, hi, Sandoval. Hi. Nobody wants to watch this big of a flip flopper. This isn't the Lala we want. I'd rather her just stay true and not flip floppy, even if she was dead wrong, than this back and forth where I don't even know what I'm going to get on a certain day or a certain episode. Well, I don't think Lala is the girl's girl that we hope she would be. I think she's coming up. Uh, I think she, she's coming up real short on that. So, um, yeah, she's well, don't worry, Tracy. Stasi is not coming back. Only thing I do miss about Stasi is how she yelled at Tom. <laughs> I miss that. So, um, Lauren is on a publicity tour right now. What is she selling? Well, I don't know, I'm not sure, but yeah, she is. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was Queens of Bravo. Okay, thank you. I knew it was going to be one of those, um, 
uh, one of those good accounts that are always, thank you. Let me pull it, see if I can find it here um, and I'll pull it up. But I was like, oh, this is good. I got to screen grab this and share it. And then I don't know where it disappeared to. But um, uh, Queens of Bravo four hours ago says Brock knew exactly what he was doing when he brought up Rachel's name in front of Sandoval and Ariana, but then wants to act surprised when Ariana gets upset. We know what happened the last time somebody brought up Brock's past. Ooh, I mean, no lies were told. Um, oh, my goodness. Okay. I'm just trying to find this tweet of theirs, but... Oh, justice for Anne, justice for Anne. And then we get the reunion looks that are out. Oh, and Joe was being petty in her stories. We'll have to talk about that on tomorrow's No Offense, All Offense. And she's Miss I'm Being Bullied is in there um, sharing in her stories that Rachel Raquel got best dressed at the iHeartRadio Awards, but that Katie and Dana were worse dressed. And it's like, okay. All right. You can't be uh, be a bully and be bullied. Like, give me a break. Give me a break. Oh, I can't find it. Let me see if anyone tagged me in it. Um, did I share it? Let me just give it one more look to see if I can find it, you guys. And then I might just have to. A different day. A different day. Let me just. Um, this account I like following as well. There's some really great Bravo accounts on Twitter that. Um, have uh, Rex Reed, W-R-E-X, uh, W-R-E-E-D is a great one that I seem to agree so much with um, their tweets. But by wig, hello, drama's good too, or at no smoke, no more. Number one Ariana hater in this group. And that's the truth. Uh, and then I retweeted this. When a female is cheated on by her male partner and somehow the male made uh, is made sympathetic while the female is made into a villain for having, uh, for having feeling display, uh, wait. And while the female is made into a villain for having feelings displays the deep misogyny that still exists in our society. I mean, true, true. And Rex weed, not Rex Reed. What am I thinking of? Rex weed at Rex weed says it's about effing time. Somebody called the gutless group of pissant cowards out for enabling each other's misogynistic bullshit. And I am not surprised even in the slightest that it was Ariana Maddox who did it. Anyone who has been following the show. Oh, I found it. Anyone who has been following the show realizes that Ariana has been that girl to call out the men. Has she been perfect? No, but she's done it more than most of the women on this cast. And that's why I always called her the feminist killjoy. And that's why I always liked her on the show. Reality T queen at reality underscore queen says she's had Sheena's back since the witches of WeHo days. She had, def she has defended Katie to the Toms. Yeah. She went up against Sandoval multiple times against Sandy, but when he was coming for Katie, she has defended Lala when everyone was calling her a mistress. Yup. She had James back when the entire group hated him. She had Brock's back with the attempted mini mini wedding at James uh, engagement party. Oh, and her and uh, Lala got in a big fight over that. Remember? And she especially had Tom's back for 10 years through his shitty behavior. I get why she'd hope at least one person would have hers. And on that note, you guys will end because that is beautifully said. So Lala, you can, you can try to rewrite the history, but it ain't going to work girl because we were there. We watched it too. Okay. So do better, do better, Lala. Do better. Do better. Uh, Rhonda, thank you so much for the super chat, uh, super sticker. I appreciate you. Let's see if I missed any. Um, thank you so much, Pamela, for the super chat saying, why does Lala make a point to do duck lips when she talks? Yes, we all know you got lip injections. She loves them lips, Pamela. She loves them. She loves them. She loves them. So smash that like on the way out. Linda, I will be recapping um, the show after you watch it along with the value. Oh, can you recap the after show after you watch it along with the value? Yeah, I'll watch the after show and I'll watch the valley and I'll come back tomorrow, um, for you guys. So, uh, yeah, 
that's uh that's all she wrote you guys thank you so much we were over 400 strong in this live please hit that like share my channel with any people that you think would enjoy this content thank you to all my super chatters today uh and all those who sent me venmo paypal cash apps or became a member of the channel thank you so much amy k became a new member and i appreciate you amy uh thank you kathy again for the gifts off my amazon wish list thank you evelyn and pamela and jamie b and steven and chicken head and sean Johnny, Justine, Jill, Nicole, Denise, you guys are killing it. Pamela, Lily, I appreciate that chicken head. Pamela, Rhonda B, you guys are amazing. I got to go take the doggos for a walk. But like I always say, you guys, uh, your beautiful little pumpkin spice babies, I appreciate you. And always remember to enjoy yourself. It's later than you think. Bye.